my name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today I'm going to talk and show you, and people have been asking and stuff, about feeler gauges. Matt, how do you, you know, it's not the best measurement device in the world because it's based on human feel, and we're all knobs when it comes to feelings. But anyway, you look on YouTube and they'll show you videos where they show you stuff like this, where they say, oh, get yourself a magazine or something, get yourself a sheet of paper, that'll do. And then basically what you're meant to do is whatever. You stick that in there and then you're looking for that kind of feel. You can't see anything as usual. You're looking for that kind of feel. It's like, well, it depends how big your book is, what the weight your paper is, blah, 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 blah. For what is normal or correct when we're using feeler blades is to do a test with a couple of glossy magazines and a sheet of paper. So I've got in front of me here two glossy magazines. I've got a normal sheet of A4 printer paper. And what I'm going to do is put the sheet of A4 paper between the two glossy magazines. I'm just going to hold down in the corner of the magazine and I'm just going to gently pull the sheet of paper out. Now it's going to give you a good guide as to what the normal amount of resistance should feel like. Ha! Canonical. There is a better and an easier way. Um, just 20 years experience. So if you start now, you'll get used to it eventually. But <laughs> there's an easier way than that. And that's with a micrometer. Now, once you see this, if you don't already know this, and you haven't seen this before, you'll think, oh, fucking hell, obviously. Uh, this all of a sudden now makes sense, and this thing needs a battery, unfortunately. But uh, this is a digital one. Um, I'm only using the digital one so I can show you. But basically what you do is you get your micrometer, and people say, well, Matt, I only have feeler gauges. Well, if you've only got feeler gauges, you can't do the job properly, because sometimes you, you've got to measure your shims, and if that number's are worn off or something, then you're not going to fucking know what you need and what, you, what you're going to get, you know what I mean? So you need a micrometer. These things go hand in hand. I've got an old set of feeler gauges here, these ones I've had for fucking donkey's years, and as you can tell, some of them have been well used. As you can see, there's some skid marks on there. These are oiled. I've even got a brass one in there, I don't know where that fucking came from. There's one chopped in two there, can't remember doing that. <laughs> Sacrilege! But the ones I like, and I got a new set about two years ago, which is the, these are Teng ones, it's not really advertising Teng or anything. What I do like about these long finger ones is that they are exactly that, they are long, so you can basically bend them and get them into where you want. Don't be worried, this one's a stiff one, you're not bending that for shit, but don't be worried about bending these things to get them where you want them to be. But, how do you learn the feel? So, let's go for a thinner one. That one, that's a nice thin one. Don't look at it. It doesn't matter if you look at this side. So this side is 200 microns, it's 0 0.02, you can see that on there. Now what you do is you wind down your um, micrometer so you have a thin gap in there, but don't look at the reading. I can't see on this side either, I don't know where the fuck I am. And then what you do is you stick this in there. No, nope, that's too wide. Uh, too skinny, sorry. And then what you do is you go through and you say, right, 0.5, let's just go mad and let's go 0.5. 0.5, that won't fit. Um, we've probably gone to 0 0.55, 0 0.6, 0 0.45, 0.35. Let's just open them all out. There we go. 0 0.4, 0 0.45. Oh, right, we're starting to grab a bit there. 0.5. 0.55, yeah, we're grabbing a bit there, 0.55, let's stick a 0.6 in, right, 0.6 will only just fit, and what we're looking at, 0.598, so you can see, you can see there that wide, you know, your 0.6 is too tight, and your 0.55 will fit in there nicely, now we're going up in 50 micron increments, Let's get a finer set, and let's do the same kind of thing. So, the other thing to do as well is to calibrate your stuff. So, if I grab that with the um, micrometer, 0.33, if I put that in and grab that, I'm getting 0.35 there, and you can feel how slippy that is. 
So in a sense, with the two having a guess and having a go and stuff like that, you can basically feel what that resistance is in there. You know what I mean? That says 0.33. This is saying 334. Probably the oil film thickness. But you can feel that resistance there. That's kind of what you're looking for. So you can play the guessing game and see how good your guesses are. You know what I mean? To kind of like, this is what it should feel like or this is what it shouldn't. But let's just wind this out and wind this back into about there. So this is 0.33. That goes in easy. 0.356, let's try that one. Easy. 0.381, easy. 406, right, that's, that's close. So what's that? So there you go, you see I put 0 0.406 and the micrometer is saying 404. So 406 and 404 were pretty much fucking bang on. And that's how you learn the feeling. You know what I mean? The fact of the matter is, is that it's all about getting the sensation right. You can stick in massive, you know, 50 micron increments and you can be meh anywhere randomly close. The finer ones will get you closer to where you want to be. So always look at the range when you look at these things as well. Don't just go and buy a set of feeler gauges and go, you know, this says um, 0 0.05, so 50 microns to 1000 microns, which is one millimetre. And then there's 20 blades, so it's basically just divided them up by 50 micron steps. This one, it doesn't actually say on the side, but you know, there's some really thin ones in here and stuff like that. So it depends what you're trying to measure. But to get the feeling, you can set this to exactly whatever you want and then start putting it through, but don't look at it, just go with the feeling. You know what I mean? And try and lock this off if you can. This doesn't have a lock on this one, unfortunately. This micrometer is blanked off, but you can get what I mean. Now, I know there's people gonna say, well, I don't have a micrometer. Well, you're doing half a job then. There's no point measuring shims if you can't measure the shims that are in there. You know what I mean? And just hoping and relying on the numbers can sometimes bite you in the arse. Sheets of paper and all that shit, it's not metal on metal and it's its just not the same kind of thing. And like I said, these are usually slightly oiled. I keep mine slightly oiled so they don't rust and stuff like that. You know, it's just one of those things. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.